Is your dream city on this video? Watch as we unravel urban destinations that top everyone's bucket list. Anyone who's ever wanted to live in a big city has that dream city. You know, the place you always dreamt about moving to if you like won the lottery or something? You know, if money's no object, this is where I'd live. When I was younger, I always wanted to live in Miami for some reason. Maybe, I don't know, too many episodes of Miami Vice. That was like my dream city. And as I got a little bit older, like in my late 20s, I wanted to live in Denver. When I got into my 30s, I realized I didn't want to live in a big city at all. As I researched this video, I learned that <laughs> that's how a lot of us are. As you get older, you change your dream city. About the time you get into your mid 40s, you give up on the city and all that wild nightlife and dating supermodels and start looking at suburbs in Terre Haute, Indiana and start dreaming about dates with a cute bank teller that's got a lisp. We did a survey late last year and we asked people, if money was no object, what are your top five dream cities you'd move to? We listed 100 of the largest cities in the United States, from New York City with over 8 million to Huntsville with just over 220,000. We're only looking at cities, not the metro areas. Just so you know, Huntsville's metro area has about 400 and something thousand, and New York City's metro area has over 20 million. But like I said, one thing we did learn from the survey that almost 85% of the respondents were under the age of 42. I guess the closer you get to 50, you start giving up on your dreams. I still have a dream. I want to crowd surf at a concert. Got it? Get it? Good. Let's take a look. Number 10, New York City. This one's kind of strange because for the longest time, New York City was always like number one, two, or three. Everyone since, I don't know, the 1800s wanted to live in New York City. Maybe not back in the late 70s, early 80s. It was kind of nasty back then. I mean, it's turned it around in a big way. It's still a giant city with all its problems, but New York City has always been a place people want to move to, and not just Americans. That's like the one city almost everyone knows universally throughout the world that they kind of want to move to. I shouldn't say everyone, but it's one of the more popular destinations for people People from outside the United States. And that's even though it's terribly expensive. It is definitely one of the most expensive cities to live in in the United States. Overall, their cost of living is 62% above the national average, and their housing is 134% above the national average. If you want to buy a home in New York City, the average price is $733,845. That's as of first quarter 2023. And trust me, I think that's a really low number for New York City. It gets crazy expensive there. 14% of the people surveyed had New York City in their top five. Number nine, Boston, Massachusetts. A little surprised at this one. I didn't know there was a big youth movement or any kind of movement towards Boston. I mean, they're growing. They did have a little dip in their population back in 2021, and that has to do with the pandemic. A lot of people are flooding out of the cities. They're not the only big city that had seen this, but people are normally still moving to Boston. Again, like New York City, it's incredibly expensive. Not as expensive as New York City, but it's still up there. Boston also has some of the worst traffic in the country. Now, here's what's strange about Boston, their crime rate isn't that bad. Their property crime is 16% below the national average. Now their violent crime, it's up there, 42% above, but like we've said many times, that's not terrible. Some cities like East St. Louis, Detroit, and Camden, they're in the three and 400% above the national average. But yeah, overall their crime rate is 6% below the national average. So it's a relatively safe city, it's nice, it's just terribly expensive and the traffic is horrible. A good majority of the younger people that wanna to move to Boston and it has to do with universities. They have some killer universities here and a lot of people dream about going to one of those universities. The number of top shelf universities in Boston and the metro area is freaking insane. Obviously the big ones, Harvard, MIT, you got Boston College, Northeastern University, Tufts, you got Brandeis, obviously UMass, and that's only some of them. So here's the numbers. If you wanted to move to Boston, you're looking at a cost of living that's 46% above the national average. Their housing is about 104% above the national average, and their average home price as of first quarter 2023 is $726,400. And like all these cities, that number goes much higher. Whenever I give the averages for home prices in a certain area, we always get someone going, no, you're totally off, da, 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 da. Okay, well, here's the thing. I'm not coming up with these numbers off the top of my head. I'm not guessing. I'm getting them from places like Zillow, Redfin. I usually use two or three different sites to kind of cross-reference to make sure they're accurate. And I'm sorry your opinion's different, but I think the people that actually collect these numbers professionally are gonna have the more accurate numbers than your opinion. 
14.4% of the respondents had Boston in their top five dream cities. Number eight, Dallas, Texas. I'm a little surprised this one's not lower on this list. Number eight seems kind of high. I would have given them four or five maybe, but Dallas and Texas have kind of lost their shine in recent years. They're still doing great and people are still flooding in there, just not at the volume they did, let's say 2017, 2018, even all the way back to like 2012. If you're from Dallas or the entire state of Texas, I'm sure you're happy to hear those numbers that, you know, not as many people are flooding in there. I will actually be in Dallas next week for an entire week. That should be fun. Dallas is not a bad city. It's nice. It's clean. I, you know, when, when I say it's clean or when I say it's safe, I'm comparing it to other cities, not some gated community in Maine or something. Okay. Even though Dallas has grown quite a lot in the last decade or two, it's still relatively inexpensive and a nice place for people to live. Got plenty of things to do and that draws a lot of people in. Their cost of living is actually 3% lower than the national average. Outstanding. For a big city, that is like a unicorn. I'm sorry, for a big city that is decent, that's like a unicorn. Their housing is 18% lower than the national average, and if you want to buy a house here, it's about $309,340. That's the average. A friend bought a house there last year, three bedrooms, two bath, in a decent neighborhood. I haven't seen it in person. I've only seen pictures. It looks nice. She got it for $290,000. So I'm saying that's pretty accurate, 309,000. 15.1% of respondents had Dallas in their top five cities. Number seven, Baltimore, Maryland. Yes, put your teeth back in your mouth. I said Baltimore, Maryland. Who would have thunk this one? When I first read that and I saw the stat, I started doing a little more research because I know about Baltimore. And Baltimore, in most areas, well, I shouldn't say most, in a lot of areas, it's horrible. It's incredibly dangerous. But Baltimore does have some incredibly nice neighborhoods too. In a way, it's sort of like Chicago. Chicago's got a bad reputation because they have the South Side and a few places on the East Side that are just freaking war zones, basically. The rest of the city's pretty decent, but Baltimore is the same way. There could be an argument that most cities are that way, but you know, some of these ones, it's a little bit more. Baltimore is one of them. They just have a bunch of really bad neighborhoods that are working overtime to bring the city down with poverty and crime. So why do people want to move to Baltimore? I think a lot of it has to do with their growing tech scene. They're getting big and in my opinion, I've been saying this for a couple of years, within the next five or six years, they're going to be a tech hotspot. The city and the state are doing a lot of the right things to attract tech companies. I've noticed they've had a couple good startups in Baltimore in the last few years. I think the big reason for Baltimore is it's centrally located to a lot of other big cities where people might have jobs. You got Washington DC just south of Baltimore. You got Wilmington up the road a bit. You got Philadelphia a little past that. You got Harrisburg, Pennsylvania, not too far away. And of course, Annapolis down the road. Baltimore sits on the Chesapeake Bay. That might play a big part in why people are moving there. And they do have a pretty good nightlife. So all those things combined are why a lot of people are moving there. This is definitely gonna be one of those things where most of the respondents for this one are going to be younger people. Tech industry, nightlife, all for young people. Now, what I really find strange about this, besides it's a you know dangerous city and people are dreaming about moving there, is it's affordable. Now, it was very clear at the beginning, any place you could move, price no object, where would you move to? And they chose one of the cheapest major cities in the US as one of those. The overall cost of living is 1% lower than the national average and housing is actually 11% lower in Baltimore. If you wanna buy a house in Baltimore, Maryland, uh, the average is about $179,536. That's not bad for a dream city. 15.5% of respondents had Baltimore in their top five. Number six, Charlotte, North Carolina. So I'm not really surprised at this one. Charlotte in recent years has been really looking good to a lot of people, especially if you're in like the healthcare industry or transportation industry. As a matter of fact, the whole healthcare industry is a big thing in North Carolina for anyone looking for a job in that industry. Charlotte is a city that has boomed in the last couple of decades. It's grown massively. I even looked at some property out there on Lake Norman, which is north of Charlotte, some years back. But I get why a lot of younger people, a lot of people in general are moving to Charlotte. It's a nice place to live. Their cost of living is even with the national average, which is outstanding. Their housing is only 2% above. That is great for a place that's, you know, a nice place to live. 
If you want to buy a house in Charlotte, you're looking at the average home price of about $387,000. And in the survey, 15.8% of respondents had Charlotte in their top five. Number five, Miami, Florida. This is a little surprising. Miami had its heyday in the 1980s and 1990s, and it's kind of lost its shine for the better part of the last three decades, at least. I mean, it's still a popular city. It's just not that mega city that everyone wants to move to like it used to be. But apparently here they are on the list. People are now, you know, warming up to Miami again. Miami is a great city for younger people. There's plenty of things to do, great nightlife. So I can see the allure to Miami, especially for people from Florida. It's way better than Jacksonville. I actually heard they wanna give Jacksonville to Georgia if they'll take it, but I don't think Georgia wants it. One thing I really love about Miami, and you kind of see it in Los Angeles too, there are so many different communities. I mean, communities kind of blend in with one another in most cities. These ones are vastly different depending on where you go. Seems like forever since I was last in Miami. It's a, definitely a nice and interesting city. Their cost of living is 11% above the national average. Housing is 33% above the national average, which, you know, in my opinion, is not terrible considering what kind of city it is. The average home here goes for about $561,000. 16.4% of the respondents had Miami in their top five. Number four, Las Vegas, Nevada. This one, if it wasn't on the list, I'd be kind of surprised. Since a lot of the people that responded were younger, a lot of younger people want to live in Las Vegas just because it's Las Vegas. Las Vegas in the surrounding area is affordable compared to a lot of other major cities. Sure, if you're coming from Douglas, Arizona, the prices might make you choke, but in the grand scheme of things, Las Vegas is pretty affordable. This one's a little different too. Not a lot of people move to Las Vegas. They do move to the metro area. But a lot of the other ones on this list were specifically wanting to move to Miami. Just from what I know about Las Vegas, it's really people want to move to that metro area, which includes Henderson. Las Vegas is one of those places I had thought about moving to in my like early 20s and mid 20s. When I had a couple kids, that whole dream got knocked out of my mouth. That I don't like sweating when I walk to the mailbox in October. But what's drawn people into Las Vegas is the affordability and the nightlife, definitely. The cost of living in Las Vegas is about 2% above the national average. Housing is about 1% above the national average. And the average house goes for about $399,000. There's a great channel called Jacob's Life in Vegas. I've kind of, me and him have communicated back and forth. He has a great channel. If you ever think about moving to Las Vegas, definitely check his channel out. He's a nice guy. I'll leave a link down below. 18.8% .8 of the respondents had Las Vegas down in their top five. Number three, Austin, Texas. Yeah, this is not a surprise. Austin's been popular for quite some time. Austin's also, much like Portland, they're both kind of strange and they've both been on the decline because of the homeless situation that they have. But I'll tell you right now, Portland, Oregon was on this list since I'd say the mid 90s. It is no longer in even the top 20. As far back as 2015, they were in the top 10. And I could be wrong, but I think they were still in the top 10 in 2017. Sometime after that, it went south and it's continuing to go south. But Austin has held on. Here they are at number three. If you've never been to Austin, Texas, it is nothing like the rest of Texas. And I don't like bringing politics into something that, you know, a video that doesn't need politics, but this one's a little interesting. Austin is one of those places that is very liberal compared to the rest of Texas, which is very conservative, very Democrat, very much Republican for the rest of Texas. Oddly enough, that's exactly what's going on in Portland. But Austin is still popular, and I think it's got quite a few more years of that popularity, no matter what's going on there. It's got a great music scene, which is probably how it got on this list. A lot of young people love a good music scene. I mean, Seattle blew up in the 1990s because the whole grunge thing. Los Angeles has had several different music genres that have brought a lot of young people in. And I know a lot of you don't think that's a big deal. It is, it brings people in. Half the time they're like age 17 to 24, but it does bring them in, they are people. If you wanna to move to Austin and listen to some really cool music, uh, it's gonna cost you a little bit, not much. The cost of living is 7% above the national average. Housing is 33% above the national average. So it's a little expensive. The average home here goes for about $554,000. 18.8% of the people that responded to the survey had Austin, Texas in their top five. One thing I should mention, there were about 30 different cities out of the top 100 that didn't even get one vote. 
Number two, Atlanta, Georgia. This one should be no surprise to anybody. I mean, Atlanta's been popular for probably the last two decades, and again, a lot of that had to do with their music scenes. I mean, other things too, not just the music. At the 2020 census, Atlanta almost grew by 20%. And that's because this city's been doing a lot of right things to get people to move in there. They've encouraged tech companies to start up there, and they have, and the movie industry that almost always was in Southern California. Well, about 20 years ago, a lot of it shifted over to Atlanta. Then again, that's bringing in youth, and a bunch of youths answered this survey. It's a quick nod to my cousin Vinny. Great movie. These two youths. If you want to move to Atlanta, the cost of living is about 7% above the national average, and housing is about 16% above. The average house here goes for $379,000. That is not bad. 19.3% of the respondents had Atlanta, Georgia in their top five. All right, before we get to number one, don't forget we have another channel called On This Day. There's a link down below along with a link for Home and Money, which is a website that if you do decide you want to move, can get you in touch with a real estate agent just about any place in the United States. It's a pretty cool website. It's got other things on there too. All right, on to number one. And number one, Los Angeles, California. Yes, I said Los Angeles, the city of angels, that gem of Southern California. You could now clean off your screen because I'm sure you spit your drink all over it. Even though California has this horrible reputation and well-deserved, and they've got a lot of really bad things going on there, there is just too much going on in Los Angeles not to draw people in. Los Angeles has never had a down census. They've had a couple of years or two where they lost like one or 2%, 2022 was one of those, but for the most part, almost every single year since 1850, Los Angeles has gained population. I honestly think they're gonna keep losing population for the next two or three years and then, you know, it'll turn it around. And by the end of the census or the end of this decade, they'll still gain. California might not, but Los Angeles will. Los Angeles is extremely expensive. The traffic is horrible. The air quality is horrible, but they got that ocean right there and that makes everything better. If you're not an ocean person, you probably don't understand. For most of my life, I couldn't dream about, you know, moving more than a mile away from the ocean. I have relatives that are still that way. Now, I know a lot of you are sitting there thinking there's no way these numbers are correct. I got bad news for you. They are. It depends on what you watch, where you get your news. They paint a horrible picture of places like Los Angeles. Now, Los Angeles does have a heap of problems, and I'm not saying they don't, but that doesn't mean everyone's flooding out of there. People are still moving in to Los Angeles at a pretty good pace. The downside is most retirees are leaving. And really, that's because of cost. Probably traffic plays a big part too. But young people still flood into Los Angeles. I know it seems weird because you've been, you know, given this image of Los Angeles and all of California that it is just this hellscape, post-apocalyptic nightmare. Well, if you go to Skid Row, which is in Los Angeles, it kind of looks like that. But the rest, uh, you know, it's a mixed bag. It could be good, it could be bad. But it's definitely not the picture they paint on a lot of different news channels. It's almost like if you're grading a city. Let's say Los Angeles sucks, but they get a D. You know, that's if you're gonna grade them, they get a D. If you watch certain news channels, they're rating Los Angeles as a F minus minus. It's what the media does. They just paint these horrible pictures to get you to watch their crap. But if you wanna move to Los Angeles, the cost of living is 48% above the national average and buckle up for this one. Their housing cost, 127% above the national average. The average home here goes for $916,000. My mom bought a house in the late 70s, early 80s in Torrance, California, which is in the metro area. So it was about $70,000 back then. Three years ago, four years ago maybe, it was sold for right around a million dollars. This started off as just a typical blue collar neighborhood. It was nothing special. It's just the prices there are freaking insane. People are still moving to that area. It's weird. Anyway, 21.5% of respondents had Los Angeles as their dream city. And honestly, it's gotta be money's no object if you're gonna move there or buy a house. Real estate is terribly expensive in that area. All right, everyone, that's today's video. Hope you guys enjoyed it. Hope you got some information out of it. Now go out, have a great day, and be nice to each other.